We again had uh, we are dealing with a closed product, okay. Uh, and if you have and uh, J broker compact group act on M by R of half, then we have cross product. Represented on the reverse space K, which is the uh, H value, the L2 function, relative to hard measure. When G equals to real, this is nothing but L2 function over uh, relative to the vague measure. And uh, they, this had uh, two uh, type of operators. Well, R half to the inverse of X. Psi S. Psi is in this K. S and U G e O P. Psi evaluated as S equal to by the inverse S, okay. So, and uh, this is pi r half of M, U is G over G. This is the cross product. Okay, now, to analyze the crossed product, we really have to leave the domain of bounded linear functional. Uh, unless we restrict ourselves to the discrete group. Okay, when you have, uh, so or let's consider the co M valued so strongly continuous function over G with compact support. Okay, this is the space of M valued sigma uh, sigma strong strong star continuous functions on G with compact support. There we needed a strong star because we want to have a, a operation to be con uh, uh, continuous, stay in the same domain. And there, okay. Um, <coughs> Unless group G is discrete, there's no way to write the generic element in uh, any reasonable form. But there are plenty elements which has good expression, such as so um, uh, f x g uh, uh, s to x of s in M. Uh, uh, is say the uh, measurable and the relative to G, the function norm is bounded. So this is the norm of x one. Then you can define suddenly the following element: x to be over G, x of S. You, okay, I, I don't meet this G anymore. That's too heavy to carry all over the place. So let's U of S, DS. Okay, so uh, that means L1. You're also omitting pi alpha. Uh, you pi alpha, you, you yeah, have to pi alpha. No, uh, the aloha. You, you, uh, oh, excuse me, yes, uh, thank you, pi alpha needed, otherwise XS stays on, uh, on H. 
Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, you can ex go into this cross product. Let's write it in the single letter N. It's not to carry all the time this heavy notation. Okay. So, well, element L1 number MG is it's okay, Banach algebra, etc. That's uh, relative to the well, twisted convolution, which you are coming from the action work. Uh, it's not that easy to handle that. The reason is pointwise evaluation is not well defined in L1. So we rather stay in this incomplete uh, uh, linear space. Okay. And there, uh, okay, if you multiply, uh, uh, y equal to pi r how y of s u of s ds then you, you find x y will be the, a bit of a, a twisted and so with this mind we will define the product okay of two elements convolution uh, y evaluated at, at uh, say t will be x of s, alpha s, y, t minus s, ds. And x star of s equal to, cos that one, uh, alpha s, well, well, x s uh, inverse star. Okay. So that's what uh, you will have, uh, the star algebra structure on this uh, CCMG. Then uh, you represent this on this, uh, this integral makes sense because X has a, X has a compact support, etc. Now, uh, uh, we want to uh, make the following. So C, C, M, G, convolution C, C, M, G. This means a set of all linear combination, finite linear combination. in C, C, M, G. Okay. You're assuming T is a million? It's, uh, okay. Now we embed this uh, C, C, M, uh, C, C, M, G inside and uh, the via how it, it goes, the x is then represented as the pi r of x s u of s d s. And this product become operator product with inside the crossed product. What is that? Alpha s of y? No, actually. This one. Oh, y t inverse s d s. That's a convolution. The twisted by the action. Namely, what you have is the, the, let's do it. X s u s d s or pi alpha. Pi alpha y of t, uh, u of t, dt. Then this will be double integral. Pi alpha of x s, uh, u s, pi alpha of y of t, u of t, ds dt. Then you go over to that. 
uh, the co covariant uh, uh, comes in and the pi alpha, okay. Oh, this covariance comes in alpha s of y of t and u of s, uh, s t uh, ds dt. Okay, now you uh, change the uh, uh, integration order and the s goes over s inverse here, right? The, because the left invariant major. So you have, no, uh, you integrate the ds first, then back again. So you have x of s, uh, pi alpha of x of s, alpha of s, y. Now here the change of variable took place s inverse of t, ds integral, and uh, integral over g u over t dt. Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to say this is s inverse t. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is s inverse t. Yeah. S, s inverse t. Yes. No, and you had written s minus t minus s. You had written t minus s. T minus s. So I, so you you have G abelian in mind? Oh yeah, in the abelian yeah. case, yes. So we are going to be dealing with abelian. Yes, uh, yes. And, uh, oh, watch out. Yes. So T minus S for the real line. Okay. Then uh, inside this, I want to have D. <laughs> Uh, of, uh, okay, so this is uh, I, my, my D of um, G, okay, so that we have product, and here the plus of G, the positive element, this then equal outside and or the or only the Sardinia uh, sum of xi star uh, form variation xi. So this is the form the, when you represent it on the Hilbert space, it becomes xi star times xi, the positive operator, and the linear form is positive. So this is, uh, this sets in positive element. Uh, it's, uh, the, it's, it's after embedding, applying this, uh, this process. Okay. Now, uh, we want to find x from d plus m g to m identified with pi alpha of m. Okay, uh, we do distinguish, uh, well, we do not distinguish m and the pi alpha of m anymore. Okay, so we uh, replace m by pi alpha m so that m is subalgebras, von Neumann subalgebra with the crossed product. Okay, von Neumann subalgebra of, of the crossed product of von Neumann algebra. Okay, so pi alpha is now m. So m, the, this evaporate, original space evaporate now. Okay. Now, just we are now we de define the actually this is a play operator valued weight such that so how you excuse me e of x equal to x evaluation at identity it's in the m 
of B3, okay? And uh, so, if you, uh, okay, they take remove all of this except uh, at, at the origin, at the identity, you choose, choose it, okay? And then, of course, it says, uh, this domain is pretty small, but the, now uh, the, there is a, a procedure to extend this E to the maximal rate. So the, such a way that the uh, cross product M alpha G it the plus the positive operator onto M plus operator valued weight, which the means not necessarily every element mapped into M prime. It's a, a mapped out of M plus. So we only consider those elements which run in M plus. So those are M epsilon. At the same time, you N epsilon, that is the square integrable relative to E script E. So that this is a play, uh, the, those uh, n plus such that A of x star x is inside m plus, not uh, uh, unbounded or that, uh, uh, even not defined. So, okay. The, uh, this process involved quite uh, uh, the tedious, uh, well, that is the, there's no way to avoid the step-by-step -step approach. Uh, or, uh, but it is, uh, please believe me, there is a web, uh, uh, the document that uh, uh, discussion that uh, the details were uh, in my volume two, the theory of operator algebra. The volume two. There, uh, it's about. It takes maybe thirty, forty pages uh, to make it every step rigorous. That is, so you have to swallow. It's exactly just like integration. Okay, you start from a measurable set, and then you define the uh, integration for the positive functions. And then, uh, uh, okay, the positive function, they you decompose the real, uh, the real world function into the positive part and the negative part, and then complex part, and the real part and the imaginary part. So those are involved, okay. And usually it takes one co uh, uh, three months for the undergraduate math major student. That's the integration theory. That's a precisely the similar thing going on there here. With operator domain. Okay. Now, so you have the the picture is now the following. So you have cross product and to and cross alpha and from here and plus. Uh, down to M plus that operator value the weight. Now, uh, uh, so you, if you have here uh, semi-finite normal weight, and uh, even, uh, okay, so this is another unbounded uh, positive linear functional, okay. Unbound that positive linear function. You don't want to have plus infinity minus plus infinity. You don't want to have that one. So uh, it's uh, you. extended the real line to avoid uh, the plus infinity minus plus infinity. So only plus infinity plus infinity is of course plus infinity. So now, 
So this is a weight. So a weight is something lambda x plus mu y equal to lambda phi of x plus mu y, uh, mu of phi y, provided x, y all positive and lambda mu all positive. Convention is zero times infinity, zero wins. Okay, zero times infinity, zero wins, not infinity. And uh, so, so you can uh, combine this unbounded affair. Miracle occur. This phi hat, okay, unbounded, connected with another unbounded. So the domain remains very nice, densely defined on the positive part, and the semi-finite, so therefore semi-finite, and the normal weight. If phi is faithful, composed one is also faithful. Okay, so now this is called dual weight. Or you know, dual to dual to phi. Okay, so you come to the weight phi hat dual to the given phase for uh, semi-final normal weight phi. So uh, to indicate faithfulness, I take. <coughs> At zero, and then she had also the phase four over n. Okay, associated with phase four semi finite normal weight is the modular automorphism we just uh, talked about about the state, but it can be extended to the weight. That's exactly to the so we have modular automorphism <coughs> This is the issue uh, we want to discuss. Okay, how it behaves, okay, how it behaves, it's a, that's a very crit crucial for us to investigate the uh, uh, cross product. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, just one question. Uh, so it, uh, is, is the uh, domain of phi hat, yeah. uh, so is it n plus or n? n uh, the E is that unbounded operator value the weight. Right. And then the range is M plus. Yeah. And uh, you are, com uh, P's domain is M plus. So P compose following E makes sense. Not the other way around. Uh, the P composed with E, E sends E sends n plus to m plus. The evaluating at the identity it means the element in m. And then you compose with C, which is waiting here, the given with m. Go to the so the code C hat maps n plus <laughs> over to the extended positive real line. The miracle is that composed one, unbounded, composed one, another unbounded, still semi-finite. Okay, it is, then you sense, oh my, we need to work on it, right? <laughs> so it doesn't come free. It, you have to go through that painful procedure. Uh, but uh, the, it is very hard. If he had, is indeed a faithful, semi-finite, normal weight.
Okay. In the okay, the, when you apply this to the following case, okay, consider M to be scalar. Cross product is nothing but uh, uh, the group algebra. What is if we have everything at identity? You know the name. That is the group representation people which is called the Plancherel uh, major on the dual. The Plancherel formula is waiting for that, right? So the, in that regard, the, the, you can call it a, a Plancherel weight relative to phi. But it's a, 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 I prefer to call it a dual to phi. And indeed, if you do that for G abelian and M scalar, scalar, this phi hat is nothing but transcellular measure on the, the Pontryagin dual, which is going to come up very well, maybe within this, uh, this hour. Okay, so this is. Transcherel is some underneath going on. Okay, now theorem tells you the following. Sigma t we have applied to pi r half x equal to original one, well, pi r half sigma phi t of x, x in m, t real. No, uh, what happened? Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, yes. Uh, no. uh, so, uh, another set of the uh, generator is was U or oh maybe may I write it G because T and S is too much confused. So this will be delta of G to the pi r i pi r of D con radon derivative evaluated at T times u of g. <coughs> okay. Oh, excuse me. The delta of g. I, uh, uh, you should, the u of g should come here. u of g here. Not, uh, not at the end. Okay. So, uh, Everything is very natural, right? How the phi transformed by the action that is uh, then recorded by the cycle. And if G uh, is not a unimodular, then this the modular function has to, has to come in. Uh, like that. Okay. No, uh, delta is the modular function. Yes, exactly. So delta A is delta sub G, modular function group. So well, anyway, we are going to talk about the real line, so nothing. Now, what do we gain out of this? Take alpha to be, well, group, take G to be real line, alpha to be sigma phi T. What's happening? This action that is precisely, okay, this disappears, and you best that, and this is generated, okay? So, uh, in the real line case, yes, this doesn't occur because the module of the moment leaves that, and this doesn't occur. So U of S, nothing happened, fixed, right, for the real run case. 
Now, we know who does this job, uh, this model now. This is sigma sub t half is nothing but given by this one parameter unitary group, group we brought in to, to the cross product. So this real line added so in this R, uh, sigma phi real line, then sigma phi becomes, uh, no, sigma phi hat, <coughs> sigma phi hat of t is a joint of this u, well, well u r of t generates the modular automorphism for p hat. So, you write, uh, just thank you, the uh, Herman. He just told me you can write this to be h to the power i t analytic generator. Just this morning I, we heard about h, one parameter. Now this h, so we make the p hat. Minus one half x with minus one half to be tau of x. <coughs> okay. Suppose we make that. Then what happens is how do you see sigma v hat is at ut? How do you see that? So, right side. How do you find the modular automorphism of phi hat? Is that? Yeah, phi hat. Is at ut. The modular automorphism of phi hat, because phi hat is phi faithful, it has its own modular automorphism phi hat. But, which is precisely given by this one parameter in Because, uh, remember that the uh, alpha, no, u of s pi alpha of x, u of s star was pi alpha alpha s of x. That's covariance. That's the way we define the cross uh, cross product, right? So when you do this, not in a abstract alpha, but for the modular automorphism. U of t, newly brought in opera, uh, transformation, the shifting of the real line does a job. You know, the implementing modular automorphism on the, the uh, phi hat. Okay, the procedure is this. You have M and R modular automorphism. And so you are making cross product. Then you capture sigma p by as this one. Actually, if you extend alpha t, alpha s, original one to the bigger one, that will become inner automorphism by u of s. u of s sits inside uh, the cross product. That's the Actually, the intention of a cross product is to internalize the action, the represent the action by unitary operator, which relates to the algebra very nice ways, implementing model. And why? Is because this one parameter, well, the unitary representation implement, why don't you capture it? That give come into our home and that cross product. Okay, that's the way that algebra is defined the semi direct product or the cross product for the abstract algebra of the uh, uh, nature of the. Uh, uh, uh. 
uh, outing now all those uh, uh, people uh, in the early last century, 20th century, right? Okay, so then what happened? Well, of course, this age is unbounded. What you do is usually is the uh, this is a user formal trick uh, goes to the zero p hat of h uh, plus epsilon minus one half x h plus epsilon minus one half then everything is bounded and uh, to make this is, this is now inside in the n plus so the limit is the yeah. And the H is analytic generator of that one parameter uh, unitary group U of T. Okay. Then what happened is what happened in this setting uh, is the following. It's amazing stuff things happen. It's just, uh, Moser of the one in sigma tau <coughs> identity is at h minus i t times more original one, which is identity. What that mean? Moser of the one identity means tau is precisely trace. Tau is a trace, semi-finite normal trace. That much I knew uh, when I left uh, University of Pennsylvania in the, in the late spring or beginning of the, the summer of 68. That much I know. But uh, what I didn't know at that time was this uh, corner derivative. Actually, I, I missed that corner derivative very narrowly. That, uh, but the ones we had, I had a conversation with Michael Fell Fell on the uh, on the way from the our after the seminar on the to the uh, Penn State uh, uh, Penn Central Station on the 30th Street. I talked about when you talk about m of e and m of one minus e. And you have modular automorphism of P and the modular automorphism of P, and you have P plus psi on the big algebra. And I, I spoke and with the discussion. Isn't that strange that you have diagonal at the upper corner and the lower corner, you have modular automorphism? And that's always possible to combine to the bigger one parameter of the most. Yeah, but uh, if I sit down, that uh, maybe two hours or so, maybe I, I got the, the, the corner derivative. But uh, unfortunately, we, did, uh, we went to the train. Train was pretty crowded. At the, at the time I got off the uh, train, I forgot the question itself. <laughs> But in any case, so this n, uh, I write this to be m tilde. <coughs> okay, if you choose anything else, or the other one, that's a cosecular perturbation of original uh, modular automorphism, right? And uh, we know cross product does not depends on the cosecular perturbation. So this M tilde, uh, which has a trace tau, which does, it does not depend on the original, uh, uh, the choice of a, a weight or a faceful state. And they always ended up 
and with the same same alpha finite Fourier algebra. Okay. And now, question is, let's see. Now, question is, can we recover M out of M tilde? Can we recover M out of M tilde? Okay, so M is now buried into the semi-finite von Neumann algebra. If you can have no procedure of digging M out, this doesn't mean anything because we know every von Neumann algebra is von Neumann subalgebra of L of H, the algebra of all bounded operators, which type is type 1. <laughs> type 1 factor, uh, you are embedding uh, von Neumann algebra into the, instead of type 1, but type 2 or something else. It's, it's not a big deal if we stay uh, there. But the wish. Now, So we move on to the following. And the, well, so maybe we should, uh, let, uh, let's see. So uh, before moving to the next step, maybe to uh, take, uh, say, a five minutes break. Because it is now a uh, new thing to dig M out of M tilde. How to. Uh, So we begin by, by this, uh, say, uh, 12, uh, 16. We write SP, the evaluation of a P uh, is the value in P. This uh, S plus P, P equal to S, P. P, S, P plus Q equal to S, P, S, Q, and the by continuous, uh, continuous, the jointly continuous from uh, the pairing, and mu G of P to I of S equal to S evaluation of P by S. That's uh, another set of operators uh, waiting for recognition. And uh, if you apply this at the new Z of G hat, and generate the phenomenal algebra, this is really precisely the multiplication operators acting on L2 over the, uh, P. Okay. Now, examine what happened to closed product. Uh, mu, so, let's just uh, do this one on for xi in k. That is exactly the same uh, formula, right? It's, uh, uh, only xi is a vector valued now. H valued uh, square integral of function. So this is, uh, you can do that. Uh, maybe you want to write it as a P. So, Vg hat is no longer uh, uh, this one. This is still C H tensoring with L infinity over G. This one acts on L to G, scale on H. Okay. Scale of multiplication, uh, scalar times identity on the H portion. And the uh, G portion is for the, uh, the uh, essentially bounded function 
multiplying to the uh, editor function. Now, okay, you look at Vt pi r of x, Vp star, and the evaluation of the guy of s. So the scalar commute, so alpha is m. So one set of generator, VP does nothing. Just go through this. Uh, now you do this with a UGLP, uh, VP star xi of S. Which is once again S P U of T V of T star psi of S which is S P V T star psi now S minus P which is then S P uh, S minus P, P conjugate because this is a P star and B of S minus P, which is then S disappears only a T P because I S minus P, which is the same as P P uh, U of T apply to the eye, evaluating at the S. Right? So, in other words, U of VP, US VP star is S P US. That the scalar multiplication, well, S comma T, that the, the coupling is take the value in the torus, the absolute value one, times original operator B of T. So, this belongs to the cross product. In other words, VP and cross product G. VP star. Okay. First of all, uh, okay, the pi alpha unchanged. Yes, this is the pi alpha. This is the pi alpha of x. So this is unchanged. And another set of generator moved by scalar multiplication. And uh, this scalar is, uh, you can cancel also by the, um, hitting another scalar. So this is uh, this, uh, you end up with, okay, it's uh, so precisely preserving the cross product. So, uh, VP, Restricted to this cross product, and we call this alpha half of t. T runs over t half, and uh, it is uh, obvious uh, t plus q equals alpha t following alpha q half. And uh, that means a dual group acts on the cross product in a very special way. It is leaving original algebra element invariant, fixed. 
and another set of invariant moved by scalar. Okay. So, the, the alpha hat is called the, is the dual action of the hat or dual to original action alpha. Okay. Uh, since we start talking about this, maybe why not just state the theorem? The, uh, the theory. Which states the following M cross alpha. Okay, we continue to assume G community, abelian. Of the dual action. Isomorphic M canceling with L of L2 over G. So, if you pay the price here, type one factor, you recover M. Well, today is modern language, it's a second cross to uh, product, the Morita equivalent to the original one. Okay? And then, of uh, the what happened is yes, the okay this is a morphism key okay this is the con then since you are talking of the uh, dual you can go to the second dual for the group case okay the compound con pontryagin duality says second dual is a gr original group itself how about the action Second action, is that the same action as the uh, original one? You don't expect that, uh, that uh, too much to uh, request. And the algebra is already different, right? It's uh, inflated by L. And this P transforms R hat, double hat on this algebra is the same as R S with right translation. Okay, so the, this row S is uh, the following, okay, row G of S psi of T equals to psi S plus T. Addition. Okay, instead of uh, minus, it is, uh, uh, okay, when it comes to the non commutative setting, it comes from the right uh, uh, translation. Uh, so I should write instead uh, key process, <laughs> uh, anticipating the non commutative uh, duality. Okay, non commutative case. Dual of group is not a dual, uh, but still kind of a mm, complex system. You can give all kind of a structure, uh, treat like a group, and then uh, action on the Hilbert space. That is, uh, or uh, 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 the representation on the Hilbert space, or action on the phenomenology rate is possible. And then take a second there again, it's exactly the same occurs. And uh, in that case, rho uh, is uh, given by the right translation. Okay, not actually, this is a string. You stick to the left, starting from the left, and then you do everything on the left, left, left. 
But the second L appears on the right. You, you, no matter what, if you start from a right action, right translation, then second L end up with a left action. So duality knows the right and the left. And the duality is not the period two, period four, actually. At, uh, in the Fourier, tran Fourier analysis, you are experiencing this. Uh, Fourier transform, once again, of f of s is not f again. That's f of minus s. To go back to the original f, you have to do four times. The exact same uh, thing is occurring here. Uh, let me see. So this is the second. Wait, wait a minute. What is? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. So, yeah. the another item which is uh, missing is the falling. Uh, uh, remember, we started. We face through normal weights, and then you went to the dual weight, yes. and then you move to the second dual weight is also uh, on the agenda. How the second dual weight uh, appears here? Yeah, and uh, this second dual weight B of uh, second your weight circled with P inverse uh, relative to D of P, original P times trace. And now evaluate at uh, T. And uh, And the action on F, Xi of S, on this, it's become the uh, following. Uh, uh, D, P, circle, alpha, S, D, P, of P, of, this one is sitting in the pi alpha of X uh, and the Xi of X. That's the way. It's uh, uh, the, uh, the relation to the original one is a little bit more convoluted than this uh, the other action. It, uh, but still, it's calculable. Okay. Now, well, uh, the, I am not going to present the proof because it, uh, but uh, sorry, I can, I'll explain to you the, uh, the how you come guess how to, what is the guessing we are, or supporting uh, to believe this. Okay, this the uh, called. Uh, Uniqueness of Heisenberg commutation relation. Okay. Okay. Now to to believe uh, this one uh, to make yourself a bit comfortable. The uniqueness.
Okay. Uh, which involves the abelian group G and G hat. Okay. If you have four unitary representation, the both the, on the same Hilbert space, unitary, and their uh, uh, unitary representation. Uh, on the same Hilbert space. And uh, the two, uh, uh, two representations are related the following way. U of S VP, U of S star V of P equal to S P identity. The, those uh, commutator equal to the, the, uh, the body character. That, uh, this is uh, called uh, Heisenberg commutation relation or in the unitary form. Originally, it is PQ minus QP equals 1 over 2 pi i here H. Uh, H was Planck constant, right? It, but, uh, formulated by uh, Heisenberg and the uh, Heisenberg matrix uh, mechanics uh, is to deal with the P is uh, or Q is for the momentum, P is for the position, And the uh, natural question was raised, it, uh, what is P and what is Q? And then uh, XI of uh, L2 over L line goes to X Xi X and the Xi in L2 R goes to one over well take the uh, change the unit so that it uh, become one over I minus I I one instead. I D D X Xi of X. Okay. VP star, right? What? VP star on the right side. On the left side. Oh, this ah, one is this. No. Uh, this is minus, so this is uh, oh, 1 over I identity. Well, I, I omit the identity. Now this uh, P and Q self are joined. The line above, yes. Oh, here's the star. Yeah. All right, uh, this certainly satisfies uh, Heisenberg commutation relation, but the you know, question is, is it unique? And in the unbounded uh, operator form, which is not unique. But uh, while and the, uh, for Neumann and also the stone, the, instead of this uh, P and Q, E to the ITP, E to the ISQ, then this becomes E to the IST, uh, the commutation relation. And uh, it becomes, uh, okay, this is the theorem. The name and the uniqueness. Uh, possibly, uh, wild name found might be uh, that, uh, added to for the justice because he also explored. It. Uh, says, uh, okay. Well, you have to have first 
lambda g of s psi of t to be psi t minus s mu g of t psi over t equal to t p psi of t. Okay, you define this way that regular representation and then uh, let's uh, let's examine what happened from the from the s mu p from the s star mu p star upright to psi evaluation of t mu p from the s star mu p star psi t minus s p minus s p lambda s star mu p star psi t minus s equal to t minus s p and the mu of p star psi of t so uh, that this equal to t minus s p uh, p p conjugate psi of t so this is uh, s p conjugate psi of t okay uh, so in this case because this comes to the point this doesn't work it's a set of all so lambda g mu g is unique covariant representation Variant representation in the sense that well maybe it is we say up to multiplicity okay multiplicity that means if you have another u and you the b, then if you have u and v is unitary equivalent with lambda times one given space k and mu or lambda g mu z cross one hilbert space k for there exists such a k hilbert space that, that the dimension <coughs> in k is called the, the multiplicity of u b so if you know that u and b are uh, jointly irreducible no common invariant closed subspace, then that unit, then that u and the b are unitarily equivalent to the lambda and the mu. Okay, those are the uh, uh, very well known. Well, actually, uh, well, this was shown for the real line by Stone and von Neumann. For the general abelian growth, maybe that uh, George Mackey, the, the one who, to whom should be credited Mackey. And uh, he was very much interested in analyzing this uh, induced representation. And uh, this is a very special kind of induction, that uh, the induction from trivial representation. Okay, and 
Uh, furthermore, oh, okay, uh, if you do this on the, oh, wait a minute, this lambda g uh, and the mu g, mu g of g hat, that I told you that L infinitum of g represented on L2 space, and uh, lambda g g hat double prime uh, is L infinity of g hat, isomorphic to g hat. Uh, however, the representation of L infinity g hat on L2 over g is a bit uh, convoluted, of course. It's uh, those are so called uh, momentum picture versus uh, position picture. And uh, two together, generate all of one. All of uh, the algebra all bounded operators over L2 of G. If you do know that, then what happens? And the uh, you have one set of generator from S. Another set of generator from B. Remember the alpha hat P of U of S. What was it? S comma P U of S, wasn't it? Or, or conjugate. Yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> right? So that means if you go to the second closed product, then those are the internalized, so V of P, U of S, V of P star, U of S star, SP. You know that, uh, what they generate. That's type 1, the, this generate U of G, union, V of G hat is isomorphic to L2 over G. the algebra of all bounded operators from L2 over G. Those are the extra. Hi. Right. Uh, this, uh, this thing, lambda G, uh, this statement. Um, uh, this yeah. one? Yeah. So yeah. This is basically G acting on G by left and you're doing the cross product of L infinity G with G action, left action, right? The lambda G hat, G hat double prime is L infinity on G hat, isomorphic, but the representation on L2 G is convoluted a bit because it's a uh, momentum, uh, uh, excuse me, oh yes, 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 uh, I'm sorry, uh, no, this, this is something wrong, yes, this one, lambda, of, excuse me, this <laughs> lambda can't apply to the G hat, this has to be infinity, uh, yes. So is it, uh, my question is, is this statement also true for what? non-abelian case? Well, G hat, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't quite uh, hear. Yeah. Uh, yeah? He's asking, is this relation true if G is non abelian? I mean, with suitable. Uh, both G are hat. abelian, of course. L infinity of G, uh, L infinity of G hat. And uh, they are, L infinity of G acts on uh, L2 of G by multiplication. L infinity of G hat is not by multiplication. Multiplication on the Fourier transformed picture. If you transform L2 of G 
to the L2 G hat, then you multiply L infinity of the. So, in other words, this is fully transformed acting on G hat on the L2 G hat. And you pull back again, pull you transform back. Okay, so that is the picture. You so uh, not simple minded multiplication by the G, G hat element. Uh, well, because this L, uh, this is translating the uh, group element. There's no, it's everything is moving around. So you cannot just multiply by this. But if you a transform by Fourier transformation, then it becomes multiplication. So this statement, the one that you made, yeah. lambda G union, uh, this statement is P of N to G. That is just a general case of this duality, right? The particular case. Yeah. Well, the uh, well, first of all. What happened is this one, I said oh, that this is L infinity with G, which is maximally abelian over L2 over G. Now, anything commuted with it, it's, a, also, it's a in it, all right? So it's maximally abelian. Then group G acts on this by translation. And anything has to, co well, anything commuted with it then has to be in something in here which is invariant under the translation. So any function invariant under the uh, uh, translation is a constant. So that, uh, that shows you uh, they are irreducible, jointly irreducible, so that when you make a double compton, end up with uh, all operators. So compton is a scalar. So, what you notice is the following. You have M alpha G and the cross product alpha hat G. Then the, those elements are newly added. Okay, those are the operators which generate together this cross product, right? But uh, the, if you forget about the original algebra, then this is L type 1. So then you start to believe, isn't that then the tensor product with the original algebra? Of course, uh, if it is in tensor product, U of G and M of G has to commute. Uh, if it is M if V lives in here it has to commute M so uh, original M does not work so you have to find where the new M sitting okay that's a strategy that's the way I figured out the duality and I tested on the finite abelian group. And the, if you restrict yourself to the finite abelian group, it is not difficult to write it down wh wh where the M should be for this tensor product uh, decomposition. If you are simple minded that to try to decompose, Original uh, using pi alpha of m, no way. It's uh, the pi alpha of m and the u are linked. You have to decouple them. But uh, possibly for you people, try with group with maybe three elements. That's good enough. Then uh, you can see. Uh, you can write everything uh, that uh, if your uh, group has only three elements. And the, uh, and the G hat as another three element. Well, uh, the three element, you know what the group is G mod 3Z. It's just only that a possible group. And then you can write down all elements in the cross product. And then see where the 
decoupled M set. In that case, 3 by 3, it's a 3 by 3 matrix with operator valued matrix. Then you can multiply that. I think that would be a good exercise to get feeling. And uh, that's what I exactly I did when I proved uh, the jury. Oh, okay, there's a, oh, oh, then I do this. The general case is not, not difficult at all. After you know what kind of a twist needed. Okay, I think, uh, uh, yeah, which is exactly what I did.